Hey everybody, Cole here with Clasp Mini DIY, and on today's episode, we're gonna take a break from the supercharged build and do a little bit of electrical work. So, stay tuned. Today's episode is brought to you by you. That's right. Every single episode created on Classic Mini DIY is made with the help of our patrons and our long-term part sponsor, 7 Mini Parts. If you want to see more mini stuff and more videos in the future, please consider supporting the channel on patreon.com forward slash classic mini DIY or by checking out some of my awesome merch like t-shirts, stickers, and all sorts of other really cool stuff at merch.classicminidiy.com. All right. Let's get back to the episode. Now, like I said, today's episode is gonna be a little bit smaller than usual. We're gonna take a break from the supercharged build and we're gonna replace the voltage stabilizer on the back of my gauges. Now, for those of you who don't know what a voltage stabilizer is, this is a small little unit. Um, they used to be mechanical, but now use a solid state element inside. And what it does is it reduces the voltage from the standard 13 to 14 volts that are running through your car. And it reduces that to a stable 10 volts. Now, the reason that the car has this little unit here is because the original Smith's gauges require a 10 volt feed on them. So they won't operate properly if they're running the full 12 volts. Now on my car, I have to replace this because while reconnecting everything and uh, while re-establishing all of the electrical connections in my car for the fuel injection system, I mistakenly connected one wire which improperly grounded the whole system. Um, thankfully, the EFI system was not connected yet, but what that did is I'm 99% sure that it fried my little voltage stabilizer box. So on today's episode, we're gonna get my main gauge out of the car. We're gonna do that by disconnecting the middle portion of my dash. We are going to replace this little metal unit, plug everything back in, and hopefully my gauges will work after that. Um, if not, then we'll have to dive down a little bit deeper rabbit hole. If you guys are having problems with your gauges, it might be worthwhile checking your voltage stabilizer here. And uh, if you need a new one, they're not very expensive at all. You can pick this up at seven mini parts. I have a link to this in my description below. Now let's jump out to the car and we'll start taking apart the dash and getting this old box off. Now for those of you who have been with the channel for some time, um, you'll know that I have a rally dash set up in my car. Um, I call it a rally dash. It's basically three panels here and each panel has a few different things on it. The one on the left has a rally light, center gauges here, and then my controls for my radio and things over here. Now, what we'll need to do is take the center panel here out so that we can get to the gauges on the back side here. Now, there should be enough slack in the wires for me to lift this and uh, kind of rotate it this direction and get to the back of the gauge. If you have a standard gauge set up on your car, the main thing is that you need to get to the back side of this gauge right here, and you're gonna need to be able to get some wiring tools back there and potentially a screwdriver. Now, before we start this job, we need to disconnect the battery, of course, so that we're not working with live wires. And now with that disconnected, what I'm gonna do is disconnect my front panel here. Hopefully that will be enough to get some room. If not, we'll need to disconnect the right one here. Should get me enough clearance to get to everything. Now, one other thing I do want to mention is that if you do have a standard gauge setup, it might be easier to access the backside of this gauge unit here from the inside of the engine bay and through the center binnacle hole. Um, so that would be on the inside. In my case, there's a supercharger there and a bunch of stuff in the way. So this is definitely going to be the easiest route for me. So what we're looking at is the back side of the gauge system here. So what we have right here is the power lead that goes into the voltage stabilizer. So you have two leads here that go into the positive side of the original voltage stabilizer. 
and then you have two leads that go out to your actual gauges delivering the 10 volt signal. Now, when I took this apart here, um, all of these wires were still connected up, so I'm pretty sure that the voltage stabilizer up here is bad. Um, so what I'm gonna do is take a little flathead screwdriver, take this out right here, and then I am going to replace all of these plugs into the new voltage stabilizer, um, which is gonna live in the same place this one was. So unfortunately, it's very difficult for me to get a camera back here, um, and I don't wanna disconnect everything just so that this whole unit comes out. Um, it's just, uh, it's a lot of wires and I don't really wanna reconnect everything. Now before we install this, let's take a look at this. In my case, I have a negative ground system, but some minis still run a positive ground system, some of the really old original minis. Now, these voltage stabilizers are sold both for the positive and negative ground setups, but you need to order the correct one for your setup. In my case, I have a negative ground, but no matter which one you get, both will have the B and the I letters on them, and both of them will have the power source coming into the B side and the instruments or the gauges on the left side in the I setup. So we're gonna mount this. You can also see there's a ground indication here. When it's mounted to the actual unit here, that's when you get the ground. Um, if it's not connected to anything, if it's just dangling back there, it's not gonna work properly. It has to be connected to the gauge and has to be body grounded. So just something important to keep in mind there. Um, I'm gonna put this back on the side here and we should be pretty much finished up. Now, one last thing I wanna do while we have this apart. You'll see this foam is something I picked up for the mini on the bulkhead side. This was supposed to be a sound deadening mat that goes in between the bulkhead and the engine um, on the other side of this wall here. Now this is made for an MPI and I was gonna trim it up and make it fit. However, it is really, really tight back there and it doesn't really look that good once it's all pushed into place. So what I'm gonna do is, because I have this big rally dash that covers up everything, you can see I have some anti-vibration sound deadening up in here already. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna take this foam mat and I'm going to lay it back up here and uh, I'm gonna glue it into place. I'm gonna set it behind the demisters here and I'm gonna do my best to make it as quiet as possible since this is a daily driver. And one of the best ways you can reduce the sound in a Mini is by putting a foam mat on this surface right here, whether it's on this side or the other side. So I think this is gonna have a pretty large benefit um, in terms of the sound deadening potential of my car. Um, in order to do this though, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this back up into place and I'm gonna put one side on. So the right side over here, glue that into place, cut it up and then glue the other side into place on the other side. Um, I mean, it's pretty straightforward stuff, but I think it's gonna make a huge, huge impact. All right, so in this case, it looks like we actually don't even need to glue it into place. Um, it gets held in there pretty tightly, actually. It's awesome. Um, and that should provide a nice amount of sound deadening there. It extends into the cavity over here a little bit. And so what we'll do is put this panel back up and then install it on the other side. All right, and so with that, dash is reinstalled. We've got our gauges reconnected, and we have some sound deadening in there, which should be a nice little addition. 
Um, as you could probably see, I forgot to connect my uh, demister over on this side, so we got that reconnected, which is great. And, uh, and now we're all back installed and everything, so that should wrap up this job. All right, everybody. So that is going to wrap up this short episode. Um, I hope you guys found it helpful. The voltage stabilizer is something that is super simple to replace um, and can often cause a lot of headache when it comes to gauges, whether they're not reading properly, not reading the correct amount, or perhaps your just gauge is not working at all. So if you have any questions about these or questions about your gauges, feel free to post them in the comments section below. Also, just a reminder that I have extended the supercharger giveaway until the end of June. So what that means is that any entries, any purchases on my merch store up until the end of June will enter you to win a supercharger from VMAX S-Cart. Now hopefully the next episode will be me reinstalling my throttle body with some new parts. We will see some knock on some wood. Well, this is all metal over here. Um, knock on wood, hopefully that comes in and we get that replaced. But until I see you guys on the next episode, enjoy those minis and motor on.